What's happening, guys? Today I want to tell you about a hidden danger you may face when you're battling male pelvic pain. Years ago, I was friends with a teacher at a high school for recovering drug addicts and alcoholics. One day, the teacher told me about a play the school put on. In the play, every character was an addict, and they cracked jokes like, Oh no, Mary's gone catatonic again. I guess I'll be making dinner. <laughs> and so I inquired farther and I found out that this school was founded by two recovering addicts and that pretty much every conversation between the students was about their adventures and getting high. And I thought that was weird. So I asked the teacher, you know, if you want these kids to get better, why would you normalize and even romanticize addiction? Don't you want them to lead a life where they're not slaves to these substances? She conceded the point, but here's the thing. There's something like this in the hidden world of prostatitis and CPPS. I'm talking about prostatitis and CPPS support groups. In theory, these groups should help men get information they need to recover. But what I see in them is a lot of the same guys answering questions with answers like, this is as good as anybody can get, having not beaten CPPS. Some of these guys are worse than the grief tourists in Fight Club because they do these three things. First, they've convinced themselves that they'll never fully heal. Second, they're out to convince others that this limit is reality, probably because they're unwilling to do what it takes themselves. And third, they get mad when you tell them otherwise because their identity depends on this illusion. And they've been mad at me. I've been called a con artist, a charlatan. I've even been kicked out of one of these groups. In full disclosure, I broke their rules. I posted how I got better in the form of free videos which connect to a free comprehensive blog on how I beat CPPS. And somewhere in there is my suggestion that people can buy the book with all the same content if they get results and if they want to thank me. And that got me banned. Honestly, the worst part about that was then this troll spammed me continuously on Facebook while looking for proof that I was a bad guy. But I'm not here for revenge. This ties back to why you should avoid these groups. They attract men who don't want to get better, who might not want you to get better, who sometimes give you bad information, and who perpetuate the illusion that there's no curing male pelvic pain. But hey, they will give you sympathy. If you want to beat CPPS, you have to treat it as an enemy, and you do not beat an enemy with sympathy. You study your enemy, find out how they tick, and then take them to pieces. You have to take a winner mindset for two reasons. First, you need to smash anxiety as it rises, or it'll continue to bring back your symptoms. And second, you're not fighting other people and taking away their things or their opportunities. On the contrary, you can't love anybody completely until you pull yourself out of this shit and become who you were meant to be. So stay away from these sympathy groups. Get what you need from them and then leave. The goal is not to live with CPPS, it's to make it one more struggle that you beat and that made you stronger. And now here's my shameless plug for the book. Or just try the whole thing for yourself free at the blog, curecpps.com.